Since Israel's creation in 1948, Arabs have conducted three unprovoked wars of aggression to destroy the Jewish state. But today, Israel faces the greatest threat to its existence in its 63-year history. From Egypt to Turkey, from Gaza to Iran, Israel's enemies are on the rise. Israel is our enemy, the death of Israel. They will kill the Muslims, and they will kill the Jews, 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 and they will kill the Jews. Islamic terrorist forces armed with more than 50,000 rockets now encircle the tiny nation and call openly for its extermination. In these perilous times, Israel needs its ally the United States more than ever. But can it count on America's president? From Israel's beginning, the United States has been the indispensable ally of this single democracy among the repressive dictatorships of the Middle East. American presidents through the decades have reaffirmed that special relationship until the election of Barack Obama. From his first day in office, Obama has distinguished himself by his open hostility towards America's staunchest ally. He has told Jews they can't build homes in Jerusalem the capital of Israel and the spiritual center of Judaism for thousands of years. The United States does not accept the legitimacy of continued Israeli settlements. It is time for these settlements to stop. He forced the Jewish state to negotiate with the Palestinian terror organization Hamas in the so-called peace process. Hamas has sworn to obliterate Israel. Hamas exists to destroy Israel. Their mission is to kill Israelis, to kill Jews. While Israel faces an enemy sworn to destroy it, Obama has demanded that Israel surrender its right to negotiate defensible borders. He said that its borders must revert to the lines that existed before the second Arab aggression. The borders of Israel and Palestine should be based on the 1967 lines with mutually agreed swaps. That leaves Israel an eight-mile strip. You go ahead and try to defend that. You can't. If everyone around you is peaceful, you're good. If everyone is screaming, kill the Jews, you're dead. Allah, ya Allah, ihsil yahud, ihsil yahud adada, waqtulhum badada, wala tughadir minhum ahada. While appeasing Israel's enemies, Obama has dealt harshly with Israel's prime minister since their first meeting in May 2009. Obama treated Benjamin Netanyahu to a series of humiliating snubs, including presenting him with a list of demands and then leaving him to mull them over while he went to dinner with his family. There has been no such tension between Obama and the Jew-hating Turkish Prime Minister, Recep Erdogan, whose rhetoric toward Israel is increasingly threatening. After Israel intercepted a terrorist flotilla trying to break the Gaza arms blockade, Erdogan called it cause for war and said Israel had to pay a price for its aggression and crimes. The Obama administration then pressured Israel to apologize to Turkey over the incident. Throughout the upheavals of the so-called Arab Spring, Obama refused to help the democratic opposition forces of Israel's enemies Iran and Syria, but led the charge against Libyan strongman Muammar Gaddafi. Today we can definitively say that the Gaddafi regime has come to an end. By overthrowing Gaddafi, Obama delivered another Arab country into the hands of Jew-hating Islamists and America's enemies. In the aftermath of the U.S.-sponsored intervention in Libya, as many as 20,000 shoulder-held surface-to-air missiles went missing. Each one is capable of shooting down a commercial airliner. Some of them have already turned up in the Sinai Peninsula on their way to the terrorist regime in Gaza. And thanks to Obama's intervention in Egypt, leading to the ouster of America's ally, President Mubarak, the Hitler-admiring Muslim Brotherhood is now the most powerful political force in the country. This is reminiscent of former President Carter's unseating of the shore of Iran in 1979, which paved the way for the Ayatollahs and the Islamic Jihad that led to 9-11. Like the Iranian regime, the Muslim Brotherhood has called for war with Israel 
to wipe it from the face of the earth. The spiritual leader of the Brotherhood, who recently led prayers for a million Muslims in Tahrir Square, has urged his followers to finish the job Hitler started. Allah sallata alayhim, tuwala tariq, man yuadjibuhum, natilata ifsadihim. Akhir, ta'adib kan ta'adib Hitler. Wa al-marra al-qadimah, insha'Allah satakun ala aydi al-mu'mineen. With Mubarak gone, the new regime has restored the relations with Iran that had been severed for 35 years, ended the arms blockade of Gaza, and merely looked on while the Israeli embassy in Cairo was stormed and overrun by agents of the Brotherhood. And following the overthrow of Mubarak, an emboldened Hamas resumed firing rockets into Israel. Meanwhile, Obama has continued to sell tanks and other weapons to Egypt. He has outfitted the Islamic dictatorship in Saudi Arabia with fighter jets and attack helicopters in the largest weapons sale in U.S. history. While the Middle East cauldron boils, Iran races to acquire nuclear weapons unimpeded by the Obama White House. <laughs> At this critical time for Israel, Barack Obama, the most anti-Israel American president since the creation of the Jewish state, treats our enemies in the region like allies. And our ally, like an enemy.